let's talk about the Passive Money podcast. How did you... Oh, Kirby, you can't answer this. This is when Alex is going to answer this. <laughs> Alex, how did, you, how did you meet Kirby? I met Kirby through a friend at work. Okay. Um, who, who his brother served with Kirby uh, in Iraq. Um, so this friend invited me. I can't even remember if there was a, like a special occasion or anything, but he invited me over to his brother's house for uh, for dinner, and he said that Kirby was going to be there. Okay. And he always talked about Kirby, but he never really let me meet him. So I didn't want to pass up this chance, and I just went and just kind of zoned in like a stalker to everything Kirby that. Everything Kirby whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa, wait a second. Whoa, what, hold on. Hold, hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. You said you said slide in like a stalker. Is that what you said? Yeah, because so Kirby was uh, talking to uh, my friend's uncle, I think it was. Okay. Uh, about his uncle had moved down here from New York, I think, and he was trying to start investing in real estate or getting a realtor's license, something like that. Right. Um, he, he owned a towing company. And so Kirby was just giving him advice. And I had never heard like actual advice come from like a live human being <laughs> that was successful. It's all, it was always, you know, just hearing people online. So to listen to someone firsthand talk about it was important to me. And I didn't want to miss out on anything he was saying. And then from there, um, I think he uh, gave me his Facebook or something. I started messaging him on there. And then so happens we get the God-given gift of the Passive Money podcast. I like Passive it. Money. Yeah. All right. So what's the most difficult thing you guys think? And, and Kirby, you can answer this. What's the most difficult thing, in your opinion, that people are going to run into first when they're going through the process of deciding, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself together financially? The most difficult yes. thing... Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So the most difficult thing people run into is okay. they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up the life that they know. You know, they've been they've been broke already, but right. they still want to keep all those old habits that they've been doing. Mm. But so they think that it's a magical like lottery system. You know, everybody want you know instant gratification. Uh, they want their microwavable system out there. But that's the hard part is people giving up. Especially if you're in your twenties and thirties, you've been living a certain way for 20 years and then now giving that up to pivot and change. That's why Got you it. see more people standing in the lottery line instead of looking for wealth. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So then once they've done that, what's the next step? Cause it's very easy. Like you said, to do the sacrifice, to give up all these things that we talked about to this point, but like the biggest part that people have to deal with is that mental, the mental game. What ways have you made it easy for yourself and kind of that you've taught Alex up to this point how to beat that mental game, how to win that game? Well, first, Alex is a unicorn, and I tell him that all the time. What I mean by a unicorn <laughs> is you don't you won't see you won't see as many people his age, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, 21. Right. I was I was hanging in a barracks trying to get drunk everywhere, but right. you won't see them thinking about their financial future at that young of age. So for for Alex is a little bit different than telling the layman because you know they still have that peer pressure of friends and things like that. You know, Alex, you know, he ain't got no friends. Don't let him tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Wait a second. This has got ugly in this podcast. What is going on right now? <laughs> but no, but no, uh, but so but Alex, he he don't have that that need to impress other people. Got it. So that's back to keeping up with the Jones's comment is he don't have that need to do that. So it's not a, it's not a thing for him to have to worry about, but for other people, it's just, it's just setting up was really setting up a structure It's I'm not sitting here saying, Oh, you can't go do nothing, but you can't get paid. If you got a job, you can't get paid on Friday and be broke by Monday and think you're going to be successful financially. Right. I mean, okay. Okay. Do one or two things there, but you can't, you can't sit there and just every trip, every uh, club night, every baseball game, everything park, you're at all of it and think you're going to be successful. It just won't happen. Mm, okay. Let's let's go to that keeping keeping up with the Joneses part, Alex. So for you, you're at, I'm going to give you a scenario. You're at the store, right? You mm -hmm. see this pair of socks that you've wanted for the last five years of your life. 
God knows why you wanted some socks, but your feet are bare. You want you want some socks right now, right? What's your thought process when you see that thing that's been teasing you, that's been looking at you for days on end to keep yourself from going to make that purchase? Man, it... <laughs> It's not even that hard for me because I'm just like, man, how many stock, like how many shares can I buy on the stock market with this? So like, I just, I'm always thinking about investing. I, I just, if I, if I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's, there's things that I think are nice. Like right. there's certain cars I think are nice or watches, stuff like that. But when I see the prices, I'm just like, I can't fathom. Like, I can't understand why someone would pay that because to me, it's like, once you pay that, it just, you just lose the money. And mm. I, Kirby will tell you, I try to hoard every penny possible that I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, this is where this is how we this is how he got to the joke of sharing sharing a drink out with the missus. You know what I mean? So I I would assume you're holding on to every penny just based on that joke. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So all right, so so what about so what if what happens with you when it comes to things that like quote unquote improve in value? So let's say. Uh, let's not do property. Let's do like a watch, a Rolex, something on that level that is known to improve in value. Is that still something in your head? You're like, ah, that's not really an investment. And then how do you, you know what I mean? Like, cause that's gotta be difficult yeah. to set goals for yourself then. Yeah. So I'll say like on the part where I mentioned, uh, buying and selling military antiques, um, right. those are known to improve in value things dating back from like, say the civil war up until world war two. Mm -hmm. um, those kind of antiques because they're I mean obviously they're not produced anymore and more and more get destroyed every day um, they go up in value and it's I'm a huge history buff so that w I would say is hard for me to decide you know how am I gonna actually make this investment rather than can I rather than just buying it because I like it right so either I would use it to bring attention to my sales you know if I, if I can buy this item that is rare and it is known to be rare amongst the collectors community it'll bring attention to my page and will incre uh, increase sales so i'll do that um if there's something like that but yeah that that i would say is uh one one category that i kind of struggle with on wanting to buy but uh as far as an investment improving in value um my idea of an investment has changed a lot um mm -hmm. Because what I once thought was just, you know, you buy it and it goes up in value. If it doesn't bring you an income, is it really an investment? I think that would be something that people should ask themselves. Because a lot of people, they especially collect, you know, silver coins or gold, um, which I understand can hold its value or increase in value. And it's real money in a sense. But it doesn't necessarily bring you an income unless you're actively selling those those products. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, of course you know, the being able to actually sell the products makes absolute sense. And even though your fact that you're as a history buff, you have, I'm guaranteeing you're going to have that struggle with stuff that is involved in history, military right. history in some form or fashion. So that makes sense. Well, he's only like 20. So everything is history for him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to pull out military A tracks right out the original home bees. <laughs> <laughs> and toss, toss it to Alex. Alex will make it work. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right. So 